Welcome back to our Med Smarter Lecture Series, where we're taking a smarter approach to preparing future physicians. Before we get started, if you'll take just a quick minute and click that like button, and also subscribe and turn the bell on so that you'll be notified when we post new videos. Let's continue on our discussion of the Clostridia bacteria with Clostridium perfringens. Clostridium perfringens here actually produces an alpha toxin, lecithinase, which is a phospholipase, and that causes myonecrosis. This is a gas gangrene, which is important here, uh, and it presents a soft tissue crepitus. So you can actually hear kind of gas bubbles popping uh, in the tissue that has gas gangrene, and then it also shows hemolysis. So how do we come into contact with Clostridium perfringes that can inoculate humans? This is going to have uh, food that is contaminated with these spores, that's cooked, but then what's left standing at a temperature that's not appropriate to ward off any of these spore bacteria. So typically less than 60 degrees Celsius for too long, food that has these spores inside of it can uh, germinate. And when they germinate, they can get a vegetative bacteria, which can then become heat labile, forming an enterotoxin, and then food poisoning symptoms about 10 to 12 hours after ingestion of that particular spore. Uh, but most of the time, the symptoms will resolve within about 24 hours. Uh, if it does migrate into tissues, then Clostridium perfringens can perforate a gangrenous leg, and you can actually see in an x-ray the gas bubbles that can form here in various tissues of patients with Clostridium perfringens. Finally, the last Clostridia that we will discuss is Clostridioides difficile, or C. diff. You'll run across this quite often in the wards, uh, as this is a very common nosocomial infection. But C. diff here produces toxins A and B, uh, that will then damage the enterocytes in the, in the bowel. Uh, both of these toxins can give us a watery type diarrhea that is known as pseudomembranous colitis. Uh, oftentimes, this is actually secondary to antibiotic use. So we have the Clostridium difficile in our bowels uh, that is just part of a normal flora. It, however, is resistant to a lot of antibiotics. So when we do use certain oral antibiotics that can kill off a lot of our normal flora of the gut, it doesn't kill off our C. diff. So that is allowing it to flourish so specifically clindamycin and ampicillin can cause these issues uh, with C. diff infections. Also, PPIs can be seen as a potential cause of infections here. So a patient comes into your hospital, they are sick, so we give them a medication like clindamycin or ampicillin to help relieve their bacterial infection. That bacterial infection ends up going away but causes C. diff infection due to that unregulated growth in the bowel of the Clostridium difficile bacteria. How do we diagnose this? Well, first and foremost, your patient's going to have that watery diarrhea. There are two ways for us to test and diagnose a C. diff infection. Outside of the very distinct smell that the patient's room will likely have uh, to be able to actually diagnose this, we can do either PCR or an antigen detection test. Uh, one of these will have to be shown in the stool for this diagnosis to be made. Complications associated with a C. diff infection is, can include toxic megacolon. And then treatment for this is going to be unique, uh, specifically the oral vancomycin. Uh, something to note about oral vancomycin is that there is 0% bioavailability. So what that means is, if I take in vancomycin orally, there is 0% of that vancomycin that's absorbed and put into my systemic circulation. Therefore, anything I take orally of vancomycin will just go through my intestinal tract and excrete out with uh, a bowel movement. This is great, however, for a C. diff infection. C. diff is very susceptible to vancomycin, so we can give oral vancomycin that can help wipe out C. diff infections. Uh, other common uses that we do have is metronidazole or phytaxomycin. If you do have uh, cases where we treat it and it goes away, but then it does come back and it's a recurrent case, we can uh, repeat what we just did with vancomycin or metronidazole or phytoxamine, or we can do a fecal transplant. And what this is actually doing here with this fecal transplant is 
taking healthy, normal feces from a patient and inoculating that into the bowels of the patient that has C. diff and helping to uh, introduce back a normal uh, flora of uh, bacteria there. So one thing to remember here is that Clostridioides difficile causes diarrhea. So difficile causes diarrhea. If you found this material helpful for your studying, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, share this video so that more people can benefit from it like you have.